Hey, just so you know, for those that are interested, because I know there was a fair amount of disappointment the last time we had comfrey for sale because we didn't have a whole lot of it at the time. We were just harvesting it. Now that we've harvested what we want to harvest, this magical plant is back up for sale again at permapasturesfarm.com. So if you want some, it's there waiting on you. Hey y'all, Billy from Permapastures Farm. Now, I'm not gonna be as loud, I'm not gonna be making a bunch of noise because right behind me, we just harvested about, oh, we'll do a video on that, but we harvested honey yesterday and they're out there clearing off the frames and the spinner and all that kind of stuff. So we're trying to get started a little bit earlier than normal, but these bees beat us out here. But typically when we do this sort of thing, these guys are very, very agitated for the next two or three days. So we gotta work quick. We're gonna focus primarily in this video on compost and which is, which is really needed out there. I didn't realize just how much and how interested people would be in such a subject. But concerning compost, we did a little thing that was time sensitive earlier in the week concerning what to do when you have a pile like this one over here that gets overheated. So we'll go ahead and play that and then we'll come back to it. Hey y'all, okay, so this is the day before we actually do the turns in the chicken tractor on steroids. Now this is the pile we turned out of the compost cage down here last week. Okay, basically for anybody new to this, it comes out of here and we create a new pile. And this is what it looks like after it comes out of here. But there's one danger, is that you have quite a bit of nitrogen in this thing. So you have got to pay attention this first week. It's n When I say pay attention, just observe. Now, what you probably can't see on this camera is that over the last couple of days, I've noticed, and you're always gonna notice this, watch your birds, observe them. Because what I'm finding out is that when your chickens do not mess with these piles, there's only one of two reasons. Number one, you put too much food in that cage and they're like, I'm not gonna work for anything. Or basically you put too much protein in there. Or number two, your pile has gotten entirely too hot and they can't bear it. So we're gonna talk about ways to mitigate that. Now there's two reasons for it, number one, it was a lot of moisture in one day, a lot of rain came down and it got this stuff sopping wet, plus there's more nitrogen. So all we're gonna do, when I get to those, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you right now, before I open this up, I'm probably gonna see white dead bacteria. I can already tell by the steam coming off of this that I got potential problems if I don't fix them. So we gotta cool this thing off and I'm gonna show you the best way of going about doing this. All we're gonna do is take whatever that pile was and we're gonna pull it out a little bit. Now, as I come out, as I come out a little bit, I'm gonna find almost certainly that I got some white spots in here, which are dead bacteria. But I can help the chickens out because I still want them to be able to get up in here and add more nitrogen as they're extracting the biota out of this pile. See, if you get in here close, you can see all this white material right there. That's dead bacteria, that's not what we want. So when I see that much steam coming off a pile like this, and it is in an 18 day compost pile, I know that I got problems. But I'm gonna tell you, I'm really starting to think that maybe this entire system in terms of compost making, I think I love it way more than I do. And I'm gonna show you why. I like it way more than I do an 18 day compost pile. All right, check this out. We got the week before last. And if you look at this stuff, I mean, it is breaking down to the point where it's almost compost. It's not there. You can still see a lot of the material, but having done this for a long, long time, I can tell you that my goodness, it's breaking down unbelievably. And then pretty soon before you know it, it'll be looking like this pile, which by and large is compost. I mean, it needs to do a little bit more breaking down, but by and large, there's so much more of you out of this system and so much more of the chickens into this system. And that's what you want. You wanna utilize the chickenness of the chicken and at the same time, take a little work out of your hands and we're producing a product that is honestly astonishing. So we're gonna go back down here and we're gonna work on heat mitigation. Let me show you how that's done. All right, you can probably even see it on the camera right now. This stuff is like smoldering like a, like a volcano about to go off. And that's pretty cool. You don't have to go all the way down to the ground. But all I wanna do 
is pull it out from the center about like that. Now the chickens, they're gonna be okay with scratching out this stuff. Now it's gonna be a wider, when you go in at night, you're gonna to have to kind of pull this stuff in a little bit. But now we're at least still composting and at the same time making an avenue for the chickens to get their food. That's cool. So always be really mindful of that first week compost. Be mindful of the rain coming from the sky. This method of compost making does require a little bit more out of you, but check it out. If you want, if you want really awesome compost, you want a garden that you have fewer problems with because you have good soil. If you want all those things, it's going to require a little bit out of you. I mean, we've, as Americans, we've become to a certain extent accustomed to very antiseptic methods to just about everything. But this is one way that, this is one thing that you can't do in that method. Now you can if it's a cold compost method, but you're not getting it in 30 days either, right? So that's something to also consider. Well, folks, I hope this stuff helps. And like I said, no matter, it doesn't even have to be the chicken tractor and steroid system. It can just be a standalone system where you have your chickens integrated with your compost making. It doesn't have to be this system. But there's always this danger when you have chickens putting out, that number of chickens putting out that much nitrogen and that much rainfall happening in one event, then you really, really want to keep out for this. All right, despite how tired we were yesterday, and you know, this time of year, every homesteader and farmer knows that you're, you're putting in some work this time of year. But despite all that, and here comes Chloe. Yeah, despite all that, she's supposed to be at the house, but she's here anyway. Um, we went ahead and took the fence and moved it. This was the, this is our finished compost for the week. We took the fence, put it down here, and then moved everything, slinkied it down the hill. Go back and check the previous videos on that, and you can see what that all entails. But we did all that to get ahead of today because we don't want to spend a whole lot of time down here when these bees are tripping, these little flying snapping turtles. And that's exactly what they're like when you take their honey, or at least around here, that's the way they are at first. So anyway, we got that part done. This compost is ready to rock and roll. So all we're gonna do right now, we're gonna flip it one last time, probably uphill, cause you can't get sense of, it's a pretty good slope here, but you probably can't tell right now. We're gonna flip this stuff uphill, cover it up with a tarp. Oh, good night. All right, y'all, <laughs> we had to call an audible for obvious reasons. Um, I don't know if that part's gonna be in here or not, but we got lit up, or at least William did. So yesterday we got honey and Michelle got one, she wasn't wearing a hat, so this little hood thing here was covering, it was touching her nose. She got hit and she looks like a battered woman right now, so she is not gonna be on camera or in public for probably a few days. So that's no good. Um, but she's hard as three times nine, she's doing just fine. William just got hit on the cheek. And so the only ones untouched right now are me and Emily, so we're gonna try to keep it that way. So for the first time ever, I'm gonna do this chicken tractor on steroids in a bee costume because that's what it's gotta be right now. I'm not about to do, <laughs> I'm not about to wind up like the other casualties. So I'm gonna put this hat on, get this suit ready, and for the first time ever, we're gonna go out here and flip these compost piles, but we're gonna talk about it elsewhere. So, time to get suited and booted as they say. All right, y'all, well, that's the brakes. Look, we don't do clickbait or engage in any of that kind of nonsense to try to get people to watch. If you want to watch, wonderful. Um, so when these things happen, y'all, it isn't for any show. It's not theatrics. It's not anything like that. It's legit. So the whole time we're out there getting that done, we're getting, if they could get a hold of us, they would have. And uh, so what we're, the reason I even have it on right now is we're going to go back down and replace the frames that we took out yesterday to extract the honey. On a good note, looks like Michelle extracted a bunch of uh, uh, peas here. So that's good. That's not bad for a morning's work. So we're gonna go down there and uh, go, put, go finish that up. And now the compost pile that we did finish that came out of there today, 
That's another one and a half cubic yards. So here it is. We got what, four and a half cubic yards. And this system is off and running. And that's the beauty at this point, folks. And for us, in the kind of work we do here, we need tons of compost. We don't have to have it, but it's just it just makes everything so much better. As far as we're concerned, we do need it. But as far as a lot of others would consider, maybe you don't. Anyhow, we do and we can't produce enough of it. So the importance of the compost is, folks, remember, in this system, it's paramount that you really, that your powers of observation definitely take hold. Because if that thing's smoking and it gets too anaerobic, you're going to smell it. It's going to be un... Just use your chickens as a barometer. They're awesome in so many different ways. If you see that they aren't working that pile, like I said, you've only done one of two things. Either that pile's too heavy or too hot, or you fed them too much in the cage and you gave them too, many, too much protein that day. Almost nine times out of ten, in my experience, it's always that it's too hot. It may also be that your compost pile is not active. I've, I failed to mention that before. So if you need to have them get to the bottom of it, let's say the temperature's fine, to sprinkle a little bit of something they really like. Like when they were small, you probably got some leftover chick food. Just put a quarter cup of that stuff on top of a pile and they will decimate it. And then when, you, when they do that, if it's not too hot, you'll find out what you need to know in there. If it's dry, you know, if it needs water. Usually if it's too much water, it becomes too hot. So you're just gonna have to play with it, folks. There's no substitute for experimentation and observation in this system. So this is one of the most important components out of this, and it can be scaled up and even down based on what I'm finding out from uh, one of our viewers and uh, Patreon members. It looks like this stuff can be really scaled up or down in so many different ways that I'm still discovering. That's why we need as many people out there to get after this as possible. So folks, hopefully all this stuff is helpful. And remember, hey, go to our website, permapasturesfarm.com. We have a lot more comfrey. In fact, we've harvested all of it. So this batch is going to be all that we have probably until fall. So if you want some, get in there, make your order. We'll get it out on the first thing smoking immediately. So folks, until next time, this is Billy, the Permaculture Pimp Daddy, where pimp stands for permaculture is my passion. We'll see you next time.